I'll be remembered, but with you, but with God, the baddest that I would turn to. CEO with the shit that's a dumb motherfucker. They always win. There's no going under the top of the crown, resting on his head. The beast is alive, he'll never be dead. If he drunk before, bring it back to life. Push harder for it. Let us survive, show courage and strength. It's okay to be scared, but don't let it stop you. Always stay prepared. Bill, show my school, they're just not beginning. Winners fucking win, losers talk about winning. Welcome to the Bearded Beast Show. My name is Bill, and I am the Bearded Beast. Special Sunday edition today with my friend Tina Bauer. Tina, you there? Yes, I'm here. How are you doing, Bill? Great. How are you? Doing all right. Doing all right. It's it's a day in Charlotte, is, so can't is complain. It, is it raining there? I got rain in Virginia. Yeah, it's been raining. Um, it looks like the rain has kind of moved up your way. Um, hoping that we get more of a break later this afternoon. Um, from what it looks like, um, that's what will happen, so we'll just have to wait and see. Well, thanks for sending it my way. I appreciate it. Hey, anytime <laughs> I can be of help. <laughs> All right, Tina, why don't you give our listeners a little brief background about yourself? All right. Well, um, I'm actually originally from the Midwest. Um, I grew up in this nice little town, Muncie, Indiana. I prefer to call it the home of Garfield the Cat um, because that's – where Jim Davis lives. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I did meet him, but that's a whole other story on another day. Um, <laughs> well, we'll, we'll have to do a follow up. Um, oh yeah. It, it was um, embarrassing, but fun. Um, <laughs> now I really need to do a follow up. Like, <laughs> yes. I grew up in Muncie. I uh, migrated to the Indianapolis area later on in my life. I um, met my wonderful husband, then we kind of sort of got tired of having to drive on ice and snow. So we decided to make a jump to the south, moved to the Charlotte area about, oh, what, 12, 13 years ago. Um, so we could be closer to the beach. And this was the area that was the hot spot because that's the closest we could get to the beach with a job transfer. Wow. But it's been great ever since. It's been one of the best moves that we've made. Well, so. that, that's great for you guys. That's kind of similar to my story that, uh, you know, we lived in New York for a very long time, moved to Virginia about two years ago with a job transfer, and we've been enjoy enjoying it ever since. Virginia's got a little bit different weather than you guys do, though. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it seems like I can get, you know, the first year I moved here, I couldn't believe it. We had two snowstorms, and they were, they, they were about eight inches each. And I, I was wondering, <laughs> what's going on here? Because I looked back in New York, and they didn't have any. So then I'm wondering, wait a minute, did, did this weather just come with, did it, did it come with me or what? <laughs> well, the advantage that I have down here too, is whenever we have a couple of snowflakes that come down, everybody loses their minds. So the whole entire city <laughs> practically shuts down. So, um, it, it was an adjustment to get used to. We still kind of laugh about it a little bit, but we definitely, definitely enjoyed every bit of taking advantage of it. Well, that's, fa that's fantastic. I'm glad for you guys that it all worked out and you're happy with the, the transition you made. Oh, definitely. So let's get into the real reason why you're here, why we have you on the show. Um, we got some questions mm -hmm. lined up for you. And the first one is, what got you interested in martial arts? Well, what had got me interested in martial arts? <laughs> um, it was back whenever my kids were little. Um, there was a gentleman by the name of Buck Caudill. He started a martial arts class teaching kids, and I would take my four children in, and it got to a point to where I'm kind of coaching my kids along with them. No, you've got to make sure you do your block this way. You've got to come up and then turn, things of that nature. And so he approached me after class one day, um, after the kids' class, and he says to me, you know what, Tina? I am going to start an adult class here soon. And I think you would be a great person. One of the, you know, that you would be great for this. I, I would love to have you in the adult class. And without missing a beat, I just looked at him and asked him, are you high? And what have you been smoking? <laughs> um, <laughs> I literally said this to the man <laughs> because at that time in my life, I never, ever pictured somebody would be able to see that kind of a value in me. Now, what me do martial arts? There's no, I could never do something like that, you know. And um, just all the other negativity that 
came along with that package of being down on myself and thinking there was never any way. Well, he convinced me to try it one time. He's like, just take it one time. I just after that, then I won't bother you again. So I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. And it's all his fault. I am where I am today. And I fully appreciate him. But that's kind of a great story (laughs) because it it gave you a lot more self-confidence in yourself because it sounds to me like you were maybe the one thinking that you couldn't do anything like that. Oh, you're absolutely right. I, I, I couldn't understand for the life of me why he would say those things to me. Why would you, why would you ask me to be in your adult class? Are you really seriously? And, uh, but yeah, no, he, and he, I still stay connected with him today and God love him. Um, he always is so encouraging whenever I just received my brown belt and I shared that with him. He told me, he said, I knew it. I saw that in you all those years ago. And now you're starting to see it for yourself. Um, and it makes me feel so good. So full of pride and happiness. And, um, like you pointed out, I am way more confident than what I ever used to be. Yeah. See, that's a fantastic story because sometimes we just need to find that person who gives us that little push, right? Who who believes in us when we don't believe in ourselves. Yes, absolutely. And that was what called out for me. I mean, be, beyond the shadow of a doubt. You know, that leads us into our second question. And I just finished a podcast on this, this similar question yesterday. And it's about mm-hmm. experiencing obstacles in your life. So have you experienced any in your martial arts training? And if so, oh, definitely. If so, explain them a little bit and tell us how you overcame them. Because if you listen back to my podcast yesterday, I talked about some Uh famous people that people might not realize had a lot of obstacles to overcome and they were able to do it and become the people that we know today. I'm not going to, I'm not going to spoil the, I'm going to make people go listen to the podcast now and not tell everybody (laughs) who I was talking about, but Uh we put those obstacles in front of us ourselves. Sometimes we make believe they're there when they're really not there. So give us a little bit of example of some of the things that you encountered and and how you were able to overcome those. Well, um, one of, uh, well, some of them um, revolve around the physical, the physical being. Um, at one time, I was in a size 24, or, well, 22, pushing into a size 24 pair of jeans. And now I'm down to a 16 oh, that's um, with a lot more muscle than I ever had in my life. Um, but you got to get past that. You know, you, you have to have a starting point somewhere. You do. You have to have that starting point somewhere. And then it also goes back into the challenge that I had whenever it comes to um, surrounding myself with positive people. Um, At one point, whenever I was doing my martial arts um, here, um, I had later learned that the people that I surrounded myself were not necessarily the most positive. Mm. Um, They put up a good front. They certainly did. They put up a very good front, but... Um, at the end of the day, they were not trying to cheer me on. They were not trying to help me. If anything, um, I felt more held back and suppressed. But um, how I overcame them is I would see these things. Okay, the physical. Obviously, we've got to get something done with this. So I started working on myself. Um, Whenever it comes to Um, being able to advance with the martial arts, I made sure to surround myself with people that I knew were going to encourage me, Um, not on the selfish aspect, but because I needed that cheerleading from them. Um, And then it, I I ended up having to make a very difficult decision uh, more recently on changing the format that I had been working on for a number of years. Um, so I went from one school of thought to a new school of thought. And now I have, you can say a quote unquote new coach with a new group of people that have become the best community that anybody could ever possibly ask for. Um, the coach that I have now, the only thing he asks is that you show up. That's it. You show up and you put in your effort. And um, that has, 
it, it, it's, it's actually reduced the level of pressure that I was feeling as far as like, I'm not, because sometimes you know how it is. You've got those thoughts that are going to start creeping back in because you think, oh no, I'm not going to be good enough. I'm not going to be good enough. And I've learned that there is literally nothing wrong with making those kind of changes for yourself. If that's what it takes for you to become successful, then do it. Make those changes. Surround yourself with people who are going to support you, who are going to help you succeed, who are going to help you advance, and everything else will come into play. Um, so as a result, here we are. Those are amazing points you're bringing up, and I, and I hope everybody is listening to this, and underst- and I know they're understanding exactly what you're saying, but you talked about showing up, right? And I think in yes. life, that's the number one commitment you can make to yourself. If you yes, show up, absolutely. the results will come, but yes. you have to show up. And I think what you said there, um, expectations, right? You, you had a certain expectation level in your mind that you thought you had to live up to, but this person mm-hmm. made you feel that that's not the case. All I need you to mm-hmm. do is come to class, do your best, the rest will come. Yes. When, we, when we look at Absolutely. everything and we think that we have to live up to this certain level and we think all these people around us are looking at us and thinking, you have to be like this, that's just not true. And I think those are those are great points that you bring up. And everybody listening to this to this podcast is going to get a lot of value about what you're talking about. So that that leads into I the, really hope so. and and you talked about, but you also talked about you know moving into a different culture, surrounding yourself mm-hmm. with different people. And you know they say that saying we become like the three or five people that we hang out with the most, right? Yes. Oh yeah. Absolutely. So positive people want to hang around positive people. Negativity is like a poison and it can really it can really hurt and 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 you know stop your progress it can prevent you from becoming who you want to be you're going to always kind of if you have if you have four people in your group that are ultimately positive and one person that's negative i believe most times people will fall back to the least amount of resistance and they'll become like the negative person Mm-hmm. So it's fantastic that you made that change and you got yourself into a different culture. Oh, yeah. It, it wasn't an easy one. Um, there had been some pushback, of course. Um, I had been ostracized. Um, there's a possibility that I um, may be, quote, unquote, blacklisted in some areas. But you know what? I just sit back and I laugh about it because, quite frankly, I don't care. If you're going to take that kind of an immature view on things if you're going to have that kind of an approach then so why that, why do i even want to bother be around you but and that's kind of like they're looking at you now like they're your they're your haters right they have, oh, they totally have negative, haters. negative things to say about you but you know what when you have haters in life that means you're doing shit right yep and i just blow my kiss and say can i help you <laughs> that, that that is a perfect attitude to have with people like that but you know what like i said though you have them that means you're doing some right stuff yep sure does so, and i i do have to say coach aaron king thank you i i told him before um whenever he gave me my brown belt that i earned and i just want to just kind of touch on that for just a second that was one of the most emotional points in my life because that was something that was dangled over my head like a carrot wow and i was led to believe oh look you almost got it you almost got it oh nope you got to do this now you got to do that now then it becomes about the weight then it becomes about everything else but then aaron says just show up just show up to class that's all i want and whenever he presented that to me i knew that i earned that damn thing And I earned it because I have an amazing coach who not only teaches some of the best technique I have ever seen in my life, but he also instilled not just that belief in me, but helped me to regain some of the belief that I lost in myself as a result. Well, that's fantastic. And I want to congratulate you on getting that brown belt. That that is amazing work. Thank you. It's not easy. Thank you. You no, know, it's not. People who look no. on it from the outside think it's easy. It's it's not easy. You know, for a, a 
a period of time there. I was a Krav Maga instructor. I had to close my school when I moved, but we're looking to mm-hmm. reopen it again. I know what the hard work takes. I know what these students go through. So congratulations. Mm-hmm. The, putting in the work, showing up is what it takes. Most people, unfortunately, just can't make that commitment and stick to it. But if no, you if you can't. do, martial arts is very rewarding. It is. And it teaches you a lot of good things. A lot of discipline. Of oh, yes, it does. Mm-hmm. A lot of things. that, And that leads us into our next question, I guess, about, you know, you overcame those obstacles. So how did it cross over into your everyday life? Because what you just talked about, martial arts teaches you a lot of things that you can use in your everyday life. Well, the a number one takeaway from martial arts that I have been able to apply into my just everyday life, um, it's, it, it would be, I would have to say, it's going to come to you. Everything's going to come to you when that time is right. Um, perfect example, I was working for a wonderful company. I absolutely loved my job. I got to do it from home. It was great. I had one of the best um, owners on this planet put up a really good culture for the company. But then we had this beautiful thing called interest rates start going up. And as a result, because it was involving the finance world, it really screwed a lot of people in the finance world. Um, us included, and out of four rounds of layoffs, I um, ended up getting cut in the third round. Was I disappointed? Oh, hell yeah, I was. (laughs) Did it just give me the kick in the gut? Yep, sure did. But once I just took in that deep breath, I calmed down, like, you know what? It's going to be okay. I got to show up. I got to put in the work. But as a result, I'm going to find something else. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Whatever is out there for me to do is going to come to me, but I have to put in that work to find it, and I have. That's amazing. So I have a saying that I like to go by, and the things happen for us, not to us. Yes. So maybe that that was a perfect example. Yeah, sometimes things happen for a reason. What would that reason be? Sometimes we will never know what that reason is, but what we need to do, and that's the other thing that martial arts teaches has taught me is, you know, it will take you onto a different path, onto the dirt, to a different journey. You just need to kind of trust that process. Um, things are happening for a reason. You don't understand it, but everything's going to end up working out. Right, and we don't um, the ever... Other thing it is taught, we don't oh, ever sorry, want. Sorry. No, that's all right. That's all right. We don't ever want to stay the same in life, anyway, right? We want to be writing different chapters no. of our book. So we right, don't because it would just be too boring, right? We don't want to be the same version of ourselves at twenty that we are at twenty-one. We want to be evolving and growing. Hopefully, that's what everybody's trying to do. And sometimes these challenges, like the one that you were presented, that's that's what it's all about: the growth, the learning, right. the process. You you took your martial arts experience from overcoming obstacles, and you said, you know what? No, this isn't going to be the end of me. I'm better than this. I'm going to find something else. I'm going to put in the work. I'm going to show up and and look at where you are. Yep, sure enough. It's that never giving up mentality. And and that's what everybody needs to understand. Just just don't give up. Show up. Yeah. It's not the end of the world. It's going to come to you. As long as you show up, as long as you put in that work, you're going to get to where you want to be and you are going to succeed. Well, I'm very proud of you for putting in the work. I'm proud of you for the accomplishments you've you've made. I've known you for just a short period of time, but you know, I think it would be interesting to have you back on the show a few times, giving some positive motivational stuff for our listeners. And what advice would you give others who are thinking about trying martial arts but are but might be too afraid like maybe you were in the beginning? Do it. I mean, listen, you do not have to be in perfect shape. You do not even necessarily have to be in perfect health. I'm the prime example. I have asthma, by the way. Um, So there have been, yeah, I've got asthma. So um, you don't have to be in perfect shape and you don't have to be in perfect health. You just have to be in a good mindset to say, okay, I'm going to see how, how, how this is going to make me feel. Um, don't go into it expecting that you're going to be Billy Joe badass after one class. <laughs> um, but enjoy that process of it and just 
take that first step, walk through that door, step on those mats, and be open to learn. And when you do, I can promise you that your life is going to change, and it's going to change for the better. And you are going to find so many wonderful things that come out of it. That That's that's such that that is great information because we miss 100 percent of the opportunities we never take right 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 because we're too afraid and we don't we don't want to be looking back on life you know when maybe our time is up and just wondering what ifs too many what ifs exactly you know i got this saying for my for my show and it's uh you know hashtag dwmnd and it stands for die with memories not dreams Mm-hmm. So we always need to be creating those memories instead of, uh, you know, live, you know, dying with the dreams that we wish we would have had. And I think your story is just what everybody needs to hear. And my last question for you and one that you weren't expecting is <laughs> what superpower do you wish that you had? Oh, man. Oh, what superpower do I wish I had? You know what? This is a good one. This really is a good one. Um, <laughs> um, um, I would say the superpower to be able to eat as much chocolate and drink as much coffee as I want without any effect. There. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I think there's probably a lot of people who wish they had that superpower, <laughs> including myself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't go wrong with something like that. You know, no, no. But, you- um, you definitely can. I get jealous sometimes when I see these people who can eat whatever they want and they still look the same. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, on a serious note, as far as um, what type of a superpower, um, you know, um, Wonder Woman was always one of my favorites growing up as a kid. And I would love to have become like her. Um, I felt like she had a lot of good superpowers. Yeah, she, she was did. a very strong, powerful woman. She um, was very insightful. She was very quick. She was highly intelligent. And I just hope that I have been able to live up to something like that. Well, it sounds to me like you're on the path to be a uh, Wonder Woman. You're doing some amazing things, and you've you've really turned your life around. And that is something Her to be proud of. You. It definitely is. I mean, my goodness, I do have grandchildren watching me. So um, even though they do not live close to me, I know that they are aware of what Grandma Tina does. And um, especially the girls, I need to kind of set a standard for them to show them you're not weak. You can do this. That's super important. Kids are always watching. Mm-hmm. Oh, 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 yeah, absolutely. Well, Tina, we want to thank you so much for coming on. I'm going to be in touch with you. I'd like to have you come on and tell us your embarrassing story. Um, so we'll get that scheduled very soon. I want to wish you the greatest of your day. You picking anybody in the Super Bowl? You know, I'm from Indiana, so I'm the basketball fan. All right. <laughs> but if I have to pick, um, because one of my closest friends, Denise, she's from Philly, and I did go to Philly with her a couple of years back when we ran away from home. As we jokingly say, um, I went, yeah, I took a trip with her to Philly. So I guess, you know, I'll be with her and kind of rooting on the Philadelphia Eagles. All right. Poor so, Denise. so you're going Eagles for your friend. All right. Well, we will yeah. wish the Eagles the best of luck. Also, Tina, have a great rest of your day. I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you sharing your story. It's going to be very motivational for a lot of people out there. I truly, truly appreciate it. And we want to wish you a happy birthday, right? You got one coming up. Is it Tuesday? Yes, it is. It's on Tuesday, Valentine's Day. Yay. Well, happy birthday. (laughs) Thank you. And uh, we will talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Bill. I appreciate you asking me to come on, and I look forward to talking with you again soon. All righty. We'll talk soon. All righty. What will you? Bill McDonald's the baddest that I would turn to. CEO with the shit that's a dumb motherfucker. He'll always win. There's no going on at the top of the crown. Rest thing on his head. The beast is alive. He'll never be dead. If he drunk before, bring it back to life. Push harder for it. Let us survive. Show courage and strength. It's okay to be scared. But don't let it stop you. Always stay prepared. Bill, show my school. They're just not beginning. Winners fucking win. Losers talk about winning.